The Airbus A350 is a long-range, wide-body airliner developed and produced by Airbus. The first A350 design proposed by Airbus in 2004, in response to the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, would have been a development of the A330 with composite wings and new engines. As market support was inadequate, in 2006, Airbus switched to a clean-sheet XWB design, powered by Rolls-Royce Trent XWB turbofan engines. The prototype first flew on June 14, 2013 from Toulouse in France. Type certification from the European Aviation Safety Agency was obtained in September 2014, followed by certification from the Federal Aviation Administration two months later. The A350 is the first Airbus aircraft largely made of carbon fiber reinforced polymer. It has a new fuselage designed around a 9 abreast economy cross-section, up from the 8 abreast A330 slash A340. It has a common type rating with the A330. The airliner has two variants, the A350-900 typically carries 300 to 350 passengers over a 15,000 km range, and has a 280-ton maximum takeoff weight. The longer A350-1000 accommodates 350 to 410 passengers and has a maximum range of 16. 100 km and a 319 team tow. On January 15, 2015, the initial A350-900 entered service with Qatar Airways, followed by the A350-1000 on February 24, 2018 with the same launch customer. Singapore Airlines is currently the largest operator with 56 airplanes in its fleet. As of November 2021, A350 orders stood at 913 aircraft, of which 445 had been delivered and all were in service with 39 operators. The global A350 fleet had completed more than 700,000 flights on more than 772 routes without accidents. It succeeds the A340 and is positioned to compete against Boeing's large long-haul twin jets, the 787, the 777, and its successor. The 777X. Airbus initially rejected Boeing's claim that the Boeing 787 Dreamliner would be a serious threat to the Airbus A330. Stating that the 787 was just a reaction to the A330 and that no response was needed. When airlines urged Airbus to provide a competitor, Airbus initially proposed the A330-200 Lite, a derivative of the A330 featuring improved aerodynamics and engines similar to those on the 787. The company planned to announce this version at the 2004 Farnborough Air Show, but did not proceed. The initial A350 concept, based on the A330 on September 16, 2004, Airbus President and Chief Executive Officer Noel Forgeard confirmed the consideration of a new project during a private meeting with prospective customers. Forgeard did not give a project name, and did not state whether it would be an entirely new design or a modification of an existing product. Airline dissatisfaction with this proposal motivated Airbus to commit €4 billion Euros to a new airliner design. On December 10, 2004, Airbus shareholders, EADS and BAE Systems, approved the authorization to offer for the A350, expecting a 2010 service entry. Airbus then expected to win more than half of the 250-300 to seat aircraft market, estimated at 3,100 aircraft overall over 20 years. Based on the A330, the 245-seat A350-800 was to fly over a 8,600 nautical miles range and the 285-seat A350-900 over a 7,500 nautical miles range. Fuel efficiency would improve by over 10% with a mostly carbon fiber reinforced polymer wing and initial General Electric Gen X 72A1 engines, before offering a choice of power plant. It had a common fuselage cross-section with the A330 and also a new horizontal stabilizer. On June 13, 2005 at the Paris Air Show, Middle Eastern carrier Qatar Airways announced that they had placed an order for 60A350S. In September 2006 the airline signed a Memorandum of Understanding with General Electric to launch the Gen X1 A72 engine for the aircraft. Emirates sought a more improved design and decided against ordering the initial version of the A350. On October 6, 2005, the program's industrial launch was announced with an estimated development cost of around €3. Euros. 5 billion. The A350 was initially planned to be a 250-300 seat twin-engine widebody aircraft derived from the existing A330's design. Under this plan, the A350 would have modified wings and new engines while sharing the A330's fuselage cross-section. 
For this design, the fuselage was to consist primarily of aluminium lithium rather than the carbon fiber reinforced polymer fuselage on the Boeing 787. The A350 would see entry in two versions, the A350-800 with 8,800 nautical miles range with a typical passenger capacity of 253 in a three-class configuration, and the A350-900 with 7,500 nautical miles range and a 300-seat three-class configuration. The A350 was designed to be a direct competitor to the Boeing 787-9 and 777-200ER. The original A350 design was publicly criticized by two of Airbus's largest customers. International Lease Finance Corporation and GE Capital Aviation Services. On March 28, 2006, ILFC President Stephen F. Udvar Hazy urged Airbus to pursue a clean sheet design or risk losing market share to Boeing and branded Airbus's strategy as a band aid reaction to the 787. A sentiment echoed by GCAS President Henry Hubsman. In April 2006, while reviewing bids for the Boeing 787 and A350, CEO of Singapore Airlines Chu Chun Sang commented that having gone through the trouble of designing a new wing, tail, cockpit, Airbus should have gone the whole hog and designed a new fuselage. Airbus responded that they were considering A350 improvements to satisfy customer demands. Airbus's then CEO Gustav Humbert stated, Our strategy isn't driven by the needs of the next one or two campaigns, but rather by a long-term view of the market and our ability to deliver. On our promises. As major airlines such as Qantas and Singapore Airlines selected the 787 over the A350, Humbert tasked an engineering team to produce new alternative designs. One such proposal, known internally as 1D, formed the basis of the A350 redesign. A model of the new design at ELA Berlin Air Show 2008 on July 14, 2006, during the Farnborough International Air Show, the redesigned aircraft was designated A350XWB. Within four days, Singapore Airlines agreed to order 20 A350XWBs with options for another 20 A350XWBs. The proposed A350 was a new design, including a wider fuselage cross-section, allowing seating arrangements ranging from an 8 abreast low density. Premium economy layout to a 10 abreast high density seating configuration for a maximum seating capacity of 440 to 475 depending on variant. The A330 and previous iterations of the A350 would only be able to accommodate a maximum of 8 seats per row. The 787 is typically configured for 9 seats per row. The 777 accommodates 9 or 10 seats per row, with more than half of recent 777s being configured in a 10 abreast layout that will come standard on the 777X. The A350 cabin is 12. 7 cm wider at the eye level of a seated passenger than the 787's cabin, and 28 cm narrower than the Boeing 777's cabin. All A350 passenger models have a range of at least 8,000 nautical miles. The redesigned composite fuselage allows for higher cabin pressure and humidity, and lower maintenance costs. On December 1, 2006, the Airbus Board of Directors approved the industrial launch of the A350-800, minus 900, and minus 1000 variants. The delayed launch decision was a result of delays to the Airbus A380 and discussions on how to fund development. EADS CEO Thomas Enders stated that the A350 program was not a certainty, citing EADS slash Airbus's stretched resources. However, it was decided program costs are to be borne mainly from cash flow. First delivery for the A350-900 was scheduled for mid-2013, with a minus 800 and minus 1000 following on 12 and 24 months later, respectively. New technical details of the A350XWB were revealed at a press conference in December 2006. Chief Operating Officer, John Lee indicated existing A350 contracts were being renegotiated due to price increases compared to the original A350S contracted. On January 4, 2007, Pegasus Aviation Finance Company placed the first firm order for the A350XWB with an order for two aircraft. The design change imposed a two-year delay into the original timetable and increased development costs from five US dollars, three billion to approximately ten billion US dollars. Reuters estimated the A350's total development cost at fifteen billion US dollars. The original mid-2013 delivery date of the A350 was changed as a longer-than-anticipated development forced Airbus to delay the final assembly and first flight of the aircraft to the third quarter of 2012 and second quarter of 2013 respectively. As a result, 
The flight test schedule was compressed from the original 15 months to 12 months. A350 program chief Didier Evert stressed that delays only affected the A350-900 while the minus 800 and minus 1000 schedules remained unchanged. A plan of the A350 XWB's new nose and general arrangement inside the forward fuselage Airbus suggested Boeing's use of composite materials for the 787 fuselage was premature. And that the new A350 XWB was to feature large carbon fiber panels for the main fuselage skin. After facing criticism for maintenance costs, Airbus confirmed in early September 2007 the adoption of composite fuselage frames for the aircraft structure. The composite frames would feature aluminium strips to ensure the electrical continuity of the fuselage, for dissipating lightning strikes. Airbus used a full mock-up fuselage to develop the wiring, a different approach from the A380, on which the wiring was all done on computers. In 2006, Airbus confirmed development of a full bleed air system on the A350, as opposed to the 787's bleedless configuration. Rolls-Royce agreed with Airbus to supply a new variant of the Trent turbofan engine for the A350 XWB, named Trent XWB. In 2010, after low-speed wind tunnel tests, Airbus finalized the static thrust at sea level for all three proposed variants to the 74,000 to 94,000 lbf range. GE stated it would not offer the GP7000 engine on the aircraft, and that previous contracts for the Gen X on the original A350 did not apply to the XWB. Engine Alliance partner Pratt and Whitney seemed to be unaligned with GE on this. Having publicly stated that it was looking at an advanced derivative of the GP7000. In April 2007, former Airbus CEO Louis Galois held direct talks with GE management over developing a Gen X variant for the A350 XWB. In June 2007, John Lee he indicated that the A350 XWB would not feature the Gen X engine saying that Airbus wanted GE to offer a more efficient version for the airliner. Since then, the largest GE engines operators, which include Emirates, US Airways, Hawaiian Airlines and ILFC have selected the Trent XWB for their A350 orders. In May 2009, GE said that if it were to reach a deal with Airbus to offer the current 787 optimized Gen X for the A350, it would only power the minus 800 and minus 900 variants. G believed it could offer a product that outperforms the Trent 1000 and Trent XWB, but was reluctant to support an aircraft competing directly with its GE 9115B powered 777 variants. In January 2008, French based Thales Group won a two US dollars. 9 billion 20 year contract to supply avionics and navigation equipment for the A350 XWB, beating Honeywell and Rockwell Collins. U.S.-based Rockwell Collins and Moog Incorporated were chosen to supply the horizontal stabilizer actuator and primary flight control actuation, respectively. The flight management system incorporated several new safety features. Regarding cabin ergonomics and entertainment, in 2006 Airbus signed a firm contract with BMW for development of an interior concept for the original A350. On February 4, 2010, Airbus signed a contract with Panasonic Avionics Corporation to deliver in-flight entertainment and communication systems for the Airbus A350 XWB. A partially complete A350-900 XWB on the Toulouse assembly line. December 2014 and 2008, Airbus planned to start cabin furnishing early in parallel with final assembly to cut production time in half. The A350 XWB production program sees extensive international collaboration and investments in new facilities. Airbus constructed 10 new factories in Western Europe and the US, with extensions carried out on three further sites. Among the new buildings was a £570 million composite facility in Broughton, Wales, which would be responsible for the wings. In June 2009, the National Assembly for Wales announced provision of a £28 million grant to provide a training centre, production jobs and money toward the new production center. Airbus manufactured the first structural component in December 2009. Production of the first fuselage barrel began in late 2010 at its production plant in Ilescas, Spain. Construction of the first A350-900 center wing box was set to start in August 2010. The new composite rudder plant in China opened in early 2011. The forward fuselage of the first A350 was delivered to the final assembly plant in Toulouse on December 29, 2011. 
Final assembly of the first A350 static test model was started on April 5, 2012. Final assembly of the first prototype A350 was completed in December 2012. In 2018, the unit cost of the A350-900 was 317 US dollars. 4 million and the A350-1000 was 366 US dollars. 5 million the production rate was expected to rise from 3 aircraft per month in early 2015 to 5 at the end of 2015, and would ramp to 10 aircraft per month by 2018. In 2015, 17 planes would be delivered and the initial dispatch reliability was 98%. Airbus announced plans to increase its production rate from 10 monthly in 2018 to 13 monthly from 2019 and 6 A330 are produced monthly. Around 90 deliveries were expected for 2018, with 15% or 14 units being A350-1000 variants. That year, 93 aircraft were delivered, 3 more than expected. In 2019, Airbus delivered 112 A350s at a rate of 10 per month, and we're going to keep the rate around 9 to 10 per month, to reflect softer demand for widebodies, as the backlog reached 579 minus or 5. Two years of production at a constant rate. The coronavirus crisis caused the decrease of A350 production from 9. 5 per month to 6 per month, since April 2020 a prototype Airbus A350-900 XWB during its first flight the first Trent engine test was made on June 14, 2010. The Trent XWB's flight test program began use on the A380 development aircraft in early 2011, ahead of engine certification in late 2011. On June 2, 2013, the Trent XWB engines were powered up on the A350 for the first time. Airbus confirmed that the flight test program would last 12 months and use five test aircraft. The A350's maiden flight took place on June 14, 2013 from the toulouse Blagnac Airport. Airbus's chief test pilot said, It just seemed really happy in the air, all the things we were testing had no major issues at all. It flew for four hours, reaching Mach 0. 8 at 25,000 feet after retracting the landing gear and starting a 2,500 hours flight test campaign. Costs for developing the aircraft were estimated at 11 billion euros in June 2013. A350 XWB MSN. Two underwent two and a half weeks of climatic tests in the unique McKinley Climatic Laboratory at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, in May 2014. And was subjected to multiple climatic and humidity settings from a high of 45 degrees Celsius to as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius. The A350 received type certification from the European Aviation Safety Agency on September 30, 2014. On October 15, 2014, ESA approved the A350-900 for ETOPS 370, allowing it to fly more than six hours on one engine and making it the first airliner to be approved for ETOPS beyond 180 minutes before entry into service. Later that month Airbus received regulatory approval for a common type rating for pilot training between the A350XWB and A330. On November 12, 2014, the A350 received certification from the FAA. On August 1, 2017, the ESA issued an airworthiness directive mandating operators to power cycle early A350-900S before 149 hours of continuous power on time, reissued in July 2019. Qatar Airways' first A350-900 XWB after the first commercial flight to Frankfurt Airport in June 2011, the A350-900 was scheduled to enter service in the first half of 2014. With the minus 800 to enter service in mid-2016, and the minus 1000 in 2017. In July 2012, Airbus delayed the 900S introduction by three months to the second half of 2014. The delivery to launch customer Qatar Airways took place on December 22, 2014. The first commercial flight was made on January 15, 2015 between Doha and Frankfurt. The first A350-1000 was assembled in 2016 and had its first flight on November 24, 2016. The aircraft was then delivered on February 20, 2018 to Qatar Airways, which had also been the launch operator of the Minus 900 and entered the commercial service with a flight from Doha to London on February 24, 2018. The 60. 45 meters, long A350-800 was designed to seat 276 passengers in a typical three-class configuration with a range of 8,245 nautical miles with an tow of 259 t. 
In January 2010, Airbus opted to develop the minus 800 as a shrink of the baseline minus 900 to simplify development and increase its payload by 3T or its range by 250 nautical miles. But this led to a fuel burn penalty of a couple of percent, according to John Lee. The previously planned optimization to the structure and landing gear was not beneficial enough against better commonality and maximum takeoff weight increase by 11T from 248T. The minus 800's fuselage is 10 frames shorter than the minus 900 aircraft. It was designed to supplement the Airbus A33200 long-range twin. Airbus planned to decrease structural weight in the minus 800 as development continued, which should have been around airframe 20. While its backlog reached 182 in mid-2008, it diminished since 2010 as customers switched to the larger minus 900. After launching the Airbus A330neo at the 2014 Farnborough Airshow, Airbus dropped the A350-800, with its CEO Fabrice Brigier saying I believe all of our customers will either convert to the A350-900 or the A330neo. He later confirmed at a September 2014 press conference that development of the A350-800 had been cancelled. There were 16 orders left for the minus 800. Since Yemenia switched to the minus 900 and Hawaiian Airlines moved to the A330neo in December 2014, 8 for Aeroflot and 8 for Asiana Airlines both also having orders for the minus 900. In January 2017, Aeroflot and Airbus announced the cancellation of its minus 800 order, leaving Asiana Airlines as the only customer for the variant. After the negotiation between Airbus and Asiana Airlines, Asiana converted orders of 8A350-800S and 1A350-1000 to 9A350-900S. In 2011, Airbus redesigned the A350-1000 with higher weights and a more powerful engine variant to provide more range for Trans-Pacific operations. This boosted its appeal to Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines, who were committed to purchase 20 Boeing 777-9S, and to United Airlines, which was considering Boeing 777-300ers to replace its 747-400S. Emirates was disappointed with the changes and cancelled its order for 50A350-900S and 20A350-1000S, instead of changing the whole order to the larger variant. Assembly of the first fuselage major components started in September 2015. In February 2016, final assembly started at the A350 final assembly line in Toulouse. Three flight test aircraft was planned with entry into service scheduled for mid-2017. The first aircraft completed its body join on April 15, 2016. Its maiden flight took place on November 24, 2016. The A350-1000 flight test program planned for 1,600 flight hours, 600 hours on the first aircraft, MSN-59, for the flight envelope, systems and power plant checks, 500 hours on MSN-71 for cold and warm campaigns. Landing gear checks and high-altitude tests, and 500 hours on MSN-65 for route proving and ETOPS assessment, with an interior layout for cabin development and certification. In cruise at Mach 0. 854 and 35,000 feet, its fuel flow at 259T is 6. 8T per hour within a 5,400 nautical miles, 11 and a half hours early long test flight. Flight tests allowed raising them tau from 308 to 316T, the AT increase giving 450 nautical miles more range. Airbus then completed functional and reliability testing. Type certification was awarded by ESA on November 21, 2017, along FAA certification. The first serial unit was on the final assembly line in early December. After its maiden flight on 7 December, delivery to launch customer Qatar Airways slipped to early 2018. The delay was due to issues with the business class seat installation. It was delivered on 20th of February and entered commercial service on Qatar Airways Doha to London Heathrow route on 24th of February. Airbus has explored the possibility of a further stretch offering 45 more seats. A potential 4 meter stretch would remain within the exit limit of four door pairs, and a modest Mahau increase from 308T to 319T would need only 3% more thrust. Within the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 capabilities, and would allow a 14,100 km range to compete with the 777-9S capabilities. This variant was to be a replacement for the 747-400, tentatively called the A350-8000, minus 2000 or minus 1100. Within the June 2016 Airbus Innovation Days, Chief Commercial Officer John Lee was concerned about the size of a 400-seat market besides. 
the Boeing 747-8 and the 777-9 and Chief Executive Fabrice Brigier feared such an aircraft could cannibalize demand for the minus 1000. The potential 79 meters long aeroplane was competing against a hypothetical 777-10X for Singapore Airlines. At the 2017 Paris Air Show, the concept was shelved for lacking market appeal and in January 2018 Fabrice Brigier focused on enhancing the A350-900-1000s to capture potential before 2022-2023. When it will be possible to stretch the A350 with a new engine generation. In October 2017, Airbus was testing extended sharklets, which could offer 100 to 140 nautical miles extra range and reduce fuel burn by 1. 4 to 1. 6 percent. The wing twist is being changed for the wider, optimized span load pressure distribution, and they will be used for the Singapore Airlines A350-900 ULR in 2018 before spreading to other variants. Iberia was the first to get the upgraded minus 900 on June 26, 2018, with a 280 team tau version for an 8,200 nautical miles range with 325 passengers in three classes. As of February 2018, 142,900 S had been delivered, with a dispatch reliability of 99.3%. By April 2019, Airbus was testing a hybrid laminar flow control on the leading edge of an A350 prototype vertical stabilizer with passive suction like the boundary layer control on the Boeing 787 to 9 tail. But unlike the natural laminar flow blade, within the same EU Clean Sky program. At the November 2019 Dubai Air Show, Emirates finalized an order for 5900S for $16 billion at list prices, to be delivered from 2023 to 2028. The order replaced the February agreement for 38350S and 48330neos, compensating the cancellation for 39A380S, causing the end of the double-decker production. At the end of November 2019, 33 operators had received 331 aircraft among 959 orders and 2.6 million hours have been flown. The 2019 earnings report presented by Airbus stated that the A350 program had broken even in 2019. By November 2018, Airbus was hiring in Toulouse and Madrid to develop a re-engined A350neo. Although its launch is not guaranteed, it would be delivered in the mid-2020s, after the A321XLR and its stretched A320neo+, potentially competing with the Boeing new midsize airplane. Service entry would be determined by ultra-high bypass ratio engine developments pursued by Pratt & Whitney, testing its geared turbofan upgrade, Safran aircraft engines. Ground testing a demonstrator from 2021, and Rolls-Royce, targeting a 2025 ultrafan service entry. The production target is a monthly rate of 28350 NEOS, up from 10. In November 2019, General Electric was offering an advanced Gen X1 variant with a bleed air system and improvements from the GE9X, developed for the delayed Boeing 777X, to power a proposed A350 NEO from the mid 2020s. The A350 demonstrator painted like carbon fiber weaves Airbus expects 10% lower airframe maintenance compared with the original A350 design and 14% lower empty seat weight than the Boeing 777. Design freeze for the A350-900 was achieved in December 2008. The A350 XWB airframe is made out of 53% composites, carbon fiber reinforced plastic for the outer and center wing box, fuselage, and the empennage, 19% aluminium and aluminium lithium alloy for ribs. Floor beams and gear bays, 14% titanium for landing gears, pylons, and attachments, 6% steel, and 8% miscellaneous. The A350's competitor, the Boeing 787, is 50% composites, 20% aluminium, 15% titanium, 10% steel, and 5% other. 9 abreast economy class cabin the A350XWB fuselage has a constant width from door 1 to door 4, unlike previous Airbus aircraft, to provide maximum usable volume. The double lobe fuselage cross section has a maximum outer diameter of 5.97 meters, compared to 5.64 meters for the A330 A340. The cabin's internal width is 5.61 meters at armrest level compared to 5. 49 meters in the Boeing 787 and 5. 87 meters in the Boeing 777. It allows for an 8 abreast 242 arrangement and a premium economy layout, with the seats being 49. 5 centimeters wide between 5 centimeters wide armrests. 
Airbus states that the seat will be 1.3 cm wider than a 787 seat in the equivalent configuration. In the Nine abreast, 333 standard economy layout, the A350 seat will be 45 cm wide, 1. 27 cm wider than a seat in the equivalent layout in the 787, and 3. 9 cm wider than a seat in the equivalent A330 layout. The current 777 and future derivatives have 1. 27 cm greater seat width than the A350 in a 9 abreast configuration. The 10 abreast seating on the A350 is similar to a 9 abreast configuration on the A330, with a seat width of 41. 65 cm. Overall, the A350 gives passengers more headroom, larger overhead storage space, and wider panoramic windows than current Airbus models. The A350 nose section has a configuration derived from the A380 with a forward-mounted nose gear bay and a six-panel flight deck windscreen. This differs substantially from the four-window arrangement in the original design. The new nose, made of aluminium, improves aerodynamics and enables overhead crew rest areas to be installed further forward and eliminate any encroachment in the passenger cabin. The new windscreen has been revised to improve vision by reducing the width of the center post. The upper shell radius of the nose section has been increased. Airbus adopted a new philosophy for the attachment of the A350's main undercarriage as part of the switch to a composite wing structure. Each main undercarriage leg is attached to the rear wing spar forward and to a gear beam aft, which itself is attached to the wing and the fuselage. To help reduce the loads further into the wing, a double side stay configuration has been adopted. This solution resembles the design of the Vickers VC-10. Airbus devised a three-pronged main undercarriage design philosophy encompassing both four and six wheel bogies to stay within pavement loading limits. The A350-900 has four wheel bogies in a four. One meter long bay. The higher weight variant, the A350-1000 uses a six wheel bogey, with a four. Seven meters undercarriage bay. French-based Messier Doughty provides the main undercarriage for the minus 900 variant, with titanium forgings from Cobelco, and UTK Aerospace System supplies the minus 1000 variant. The nose gear is supplied by Liebherr Aerospace. The Airbus A350's blended winglets The A350 features new composite wings with a wingspan that is common to the proposed variants. It's 64. 75 meters wingspan stays within the same ICAO aerodrome reference code E65 meters limit as the A330-A340 and the Boeing 777. The A350's wing has a 31. 9 degrees sweep angle for a Mach 0. 85 cruise speed and has a maximum operating speed of Mach 0. 89. The minus 900 wing covers a 442 square meters area. This is between the 436. 8 square meters wing of the current Boeing 777-200LR-300ER and the 466. 8 square meters wing of the in-development Boeing 777X. However, Boeing and Airbus do not use the same measurement. The A350-1000 wing is 22. 3 square meters larger through a 30 centimeters extension to the inboard sections of the fixed trailing edge. A new trailing edge high lift device has been adopted with an advanced drop hinge flap similar to that of the A380, which permits the gap between the trailing edge and the flap to be closed with a spoiler. It is a limited morphing wing with adaptive features for continuously optimizing the wing loading to reduce fuel burn, variable camber for longitudinal load control. Where inboard and outboard flaps deflect together and differential flaps setting for lateral load control where inboard and outboard flaps deflect differentially. The manufacturer has extensively used computational fluid dynamics and also carried out more than 4,000 hours of low and high-speed wind tunnel testing to refine the aerodynamic design. The final configuration of wing and winglet was achieved for the maturity gate 5 on December 17, 2008. The wingtip device curves upwards over the final 4. 4 meters. The wings are produced in the new 400 million pounds, 46,000 square meters north factory at Airbus Broughton, employing 650 workers, in a specialist facility constructed with 29 million pounds of support from the Welsh government. The cockpit of the Airbus A350 The revised design of the A350 XWB's glass cockpit dropped the A380 size display and adopted 38 cm liquid crystal display screens. The new six-screen configuration includes two central displays mounted one above the other and a single primary flight-slash-navigation display, with an adjacent onboard information system screen. 
Airbus says the cockpit design allows for future advances in navigation technology to be placed on the displays plus gives flexibility and capacity to upload new software and to combine data from multiple sources and sensors for flight management and aircraft systems control. A head-up display is also present in the cockpit. Avionics are a further development of the integrated modular avionics concept found on the A380. The A350's IMA will manage up to 40 functions such as undercarriage, fuel, pneumatics, cabin environmental systems, and fire detection. Airbus stated that the benefits includes reduced maintenance and lower weight because as the IMA replaces multiple processors and LRUs with around 50% fewer standard computer modules known as line replaceable modules. The IMA runs on a 100 megabits per second network based on the AFDX standard, as employed in the A380, in place of the architecture used on the A330 A340. The 84,000 to 97,000 LBF Rolls Royce Trent XWB powers exclusively the A350. In 2005, GE was the launch engine of the original A350, aiming for 2010 deliveries, while Rolls Royce offered its Trent 1700. For the updated A350 XWB, GE offered a 87,000 LBF Gen X387 for the A350 800 900, but not a higher thrust version needed for the A350 1000 which competes with the longer-range 777 powered exclusively with the GE 9115B. In December 2006, Rolls-Royce was selected for the A350 XWB launch engine. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB features a 118-in fan disc diameter and the design is based on the advanced developments of the Airbus A380 Trent 900 and the Boeing 787 Trent 1000. It has four thrust levels to power the A350 variants, a 75,000 LBF and 79,000 LBF for the regional variants of the A350-900 while the baseline A350-900 has the standard 84,000 LBF and a 97,000 LBF for the A350-1000. The higher thrust version will have some modifications to the fan module, it will be the same diameter but will run slightly faster and have a new fan blade design and run at increased temperatures allowed by new materials technologies from Rolls-Royce's research. The Trent XWB may also benefit from the next-generation reduced acoustic mode scattering engine duct system, an acoustic quieting engine nacelle intake, and a carry-on design of the Airbus's zero-splice intake liner developed for the A380. A hot and high rating option for Middle Eastern customers Qatar Airways, Emirates, and Etihad Airways keep its thrust available at higher temperatures and altitudes. Airbus aimed to certify the A350 with 350-minute ETOPS capability on entry into service. That could reach 420 minutes later, although Airbus achieved a 370-minute ETOPS rating on October 15, 2014 which covers 99.7% of the Earth's surface. Engine thrust reversers and nacelles are supplied by US-based UK Aerospace Systems. Honeywell supplies its 1,700 horsepower HGT 1700 auxiliary power unit with 10% greater power density than the TPE 331 from which it is developed. And the air management system, the bleed air, environmental control, cabin pressure control and supplemental cooling systems. Airbus says that the new design provides a better cabin atmosphere with 20% humidity a typical cabin altitude at or below 6,000 feet and an airflow management system that adapts cabin airflow to passenger load with draft-free air circulation. The Ram Air Turbine, capable of generating 100 kV ampere, is supplied by Hamilton Sunstrand and located in the lower surface of the fuselage. In light of the 787 Dreamliner battery problems, in February 2013 Airbus decided to revert from lithium-ion to the proven nickel-cadmium technology although the flight test program will continue with the lithium-ion battery systems. In late 2015, A350 XWB MSN 24 was delivered with 80 kg lighter Safley ion batteries and in June 2017, 50 A350S were flying with them and benefiting from a two-year maintenance schedule instead of NE CDs four to six months. Parker Hannafin supplies the complete fuel package, inerting system, fuel measurement and management systems, mechanical equipment and fuel pumps. The fuel tank inerting system features air separation modules to generate nitrogen-enriched air to reduce the flammability of fuel vapor in the tanks. Parker also provides hydraulic power generation and distribution system reservoirs, manifolds, accumulators, thermal control, isolation, software, and new engine and electric motor-driven pump designs. 
Parker estimates the contracts will generate more than $2 billion US dollars in revenues over the life of the program. One year after introduction, the A350 fleet had accumulated 3,000 flight cycles and around 16,000 block hours. Average daily usage by first customers was 11. 4 hours with flights averaging 5. 2 hours, which are under the aircraft's capabilities and reflect both short flights within the schedules of Qatar Airways and Vietnam Airlines. As well as flight crew proficiency training that is typical of early use and is accomplished on short-haul flights. Finnair was operating the A350 at very high rates, 15 flight hours per day for Beijing, 18 hours for Shanghai, and more than 20 hours for Bangkok. This may have accelerated the retirement of the Airbus A340. In service, problems occurred in three areas. The onboard maintenance, repair, overhaul network needed software improvements. Airbus issued service bulletins regarding onboard equipment and removed galley inserts because of leaks. Airbus had to address spurious overheating warnings in the bleed air system by retrofitting an original connector with a gold-plated connector. Airbus targeted a 98. 5% dependability by the end of 2016 and to match the mature A330 reliability by early 2019. By the end of May 2016, the A350 fleet had flown 55,200 hours over 9,400 cycles at a 97. 8% operational reliability on 3 months. The longest operated sector was Qatar Airways Adelaide Doha at 13. 8 hours for 6,120 nautical miles. 45% of flights were under 3,000 nautical miles, 16% over 5,000 nautical miles, and 39% in between. The average flight was 6. 8 hours, with the longest average being 9. 6 hours by TAM Airlines and the shortest being 2. 1 hours by Cathay Pacifics. It is to seat from 253 seats for Singapore Airlines to 348 seats for TAM Airlines with a 30-46 to 46 seat business class and a 211-318 to 318 seat economy class, often including a premium economy. A total of 49 A350s were delivered to customers in 2016. It was also planned that the monthly rate would grow to 10 by the end of 2018, which was eventually achieved in 2019 when Airbus delivered 112 aircraft over a period of 11 months. In January 2017, two years after introduction, 62 aircraft were in service with 10 airlines. They had accumulated 25,000 flights over 154,000 hours with an average daily utilization of 12. 5 hours, and transported 6 million passengers with a 98. 7% operational reliability. Zodiac Aerospace encountered production difficulties with business class seats in their Texas and California factories. After a year, Cathay Pacific experienced cosmetic quality issues and upgraded or replaced the seats for the earliest cabins. In 2017, average test flights before delivery decreased to 4. 1 from 12 in 2014, with an average delay down to 25 days from 68. Its reliability was 97. 2% in 2015, 98. 3% in 2016, and 98. 8% 8 in June 2017, just behind its 99% target for 2017. In June 2017 after 30 months in commercial operation, 80 A350s were in service with 12 operators, the largest being Qatar Airways with 17 and 13 each at Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines. The fleet average block time was 7. 2 hours with 53% below 3,000 nautical miles, 16% over 5,000 nautical miles, and 31% in between. Latam Airlines had the longest average sector at 10. 7 hours, and Asiana had the shortest at 3. 8 hours. Singapore Airlines operated the longest leg, Singapore to San Francisco 7,340 nautical miles, and the shortest leg, Singapore to Kuala Lumpur 160 nautical miles. Seating varied from 253 for Singapore Airlines to 389 for Air Cariba, with most between 280 and 320. In August 2021, a dispute arose between Airbus and Qatar Airways, the largest customer and second largest operator of the A350. When several A350s were sent in for repainting to promote the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, it was discovered that their fuselages had suffered an unusual amount of degradation despite only three to six years of service. The airplanes were grounded until the root cause could be determined and the airline would not accept future deliveries until the problem is resolved. In contrast, Singapore Airlines, 
the largest A350 operator, had not detected such problems with its fleet and continued to operate it. The European regulator, ESA, would not take any actions over the findings since it had not indicated any paint degradation that could affect the structure of the aircraft nor introduces other risks. On December 20, 2021, Airbus received a formal legal claim in the English courts filed by Qatar Airways, concerning the degradation of surface and paint on certain of the airline's A350 aircraft. By December 2021, the global A350 fleet had three years average aircraft age, completed more than 700,000 flights on more than 772 routes, carried 180 million passengers since its entry into service in 99. 48% operational reliability in the last three months. Comparative lengths of the three variants, with the now cancelled minus 800 the three main variants of the A350 were launched in 2006, with entry into service plan for 2013. At the 2011 Paris Air Show, Airbus postponed the entry into service of the A350-1000 by two years to mid-2017. In July 2012, the A350's entry into service was delayed to the second half of 2014, before the minus 900 began service on January 15, 2015. In October 2012, the minus 800 was due to enter service in mid-2016, but its development was cancelled in September 2014. The A350 is also offered as the ACJ350 corporate jet by Airbus Corporate Jets, offering a 20,000 km range for 25 passengers for the minus 900 derivative. The A350-900 is the first A350 model, it has a MAO of 280 tons, typically seats 325 passengers, and has a range of 8,100 nautical miles. Airbus says that per seat, the Boeing 777-200ER should have a 16% heavier manufacturer's empty weight, a 30% higher block fuel consumption, and 25% higher cash operating costs than the A350-900. The minus 900 is designed to compete with the Boeing 777 and 787, while replacing the Airbus A340-300 and A340-500. A proposed A350-900 R extended range variant was to feature the higher engine thrust, strength and structure, and landing gear of the 308 tons MHAL-1000 to give a further 800 nautical miles range. Philippine Airlines will replace its A340-300 with an A350-900HGW variant available from 2017. It will enable non-stop Manila New York City flights without payload limitations in either direction, a 7,404 nautical miles flight. The PAL version will have a 278 tons MHAL, and from 2020, the minus 900 will be proposed with the ULR's 280 tons MAO, up from the 268 tons for the original weight variant and the certified 260, 272, and 275 tons variants, with the large fuel capacity. This will enable an 8,100 nautical miles range with 325 seats and a three-class layout. In early November 2017, Emirates committed to purchase 40 Boeing 787 to 10 aircraft before Airbus presented an updated A350-900 layout with the rear pressure bulkhead pushed back by 2. 5 feet. After Emirates' Tim Clark was shown a 10 abreast economy cabin and galley changes, he said the minus 900 is more marketable as a result. The average lease rates of the first A350-900S produced in 2014 were $1. 1 million per month, not including maintenance reserves amounting to $18 million after 10 to 12 years, and falling to $940,000 per month in 2018 while a new A350-900 is leased for $1. 2 million per month and its interior can cost $12 million, 10% of the aircraft. By 2018, a 2014 build was valued $108 million falling to $74. 5M by 2022 while a new build was valued for $148 million, a 6 plus 12 year check cost $3 million and an engine overhaul $4 to 6. 5M. A350 900 ULR Singapore Airlines A350 900 ULR, externally identical to the regular A350 900 them tau of the ultra long range minus 900 ULR has been increased to 280T and its fuel capacity increased from 141. 000 to 165,000 liters within existing fuel tanks, enabling up to 19 hour flights with a 9,700 nautical miles range. The MTAO is increased by 5 tons from the previously certified 275 tons variant. Because of the A350 900S fuel consumption of 5.8 tons per hour, 
It needs an additional 24 tons of fuel to fly 19 hours instead of the standard 15 hours. The increased mhow and lower payloads will enable the larger fuel capacity. Non-stop flights could last more than 20 hours. The first minus 900 ULR was rolled out without its engines in February 2018 for ground testing. Flight tests after engine installation check the larger fuel capacity and measure the performance improvements from the extended winglets. It made its first flight on April 23, 2018. Singapore Airlines, the launch customer, used its 7-900 ULR aircraft on non-stop flights between Singapore and New York City and cities on the U.S. West Coast. Singapore Airlines seating is to range from 170 in largely business class seating up to over 250 in mixed seating. The planes can be reconfigured. They will have two seating classes. The airline received its first minus 900 ULR on September 23, 2018, with 67 business class seats and 94 premium economy seats. On October 12, 2018, it landed the world's longest flight at Newark Liberty International Airport from Singapore Changi after 17 hours and 52 minutes, covering 16,561 kilometers for a 15,353 kilometers orthodromic distance. It burned 101. 4T of fuel to cover the route in 17 hours 22 minutes, an average of 5. 8 tons per hour. At the 2015 Dubai Air Show, John Leahy noted the demand of the Middle Eastern Gulf Airlines for this variant. In February 2018, Qatar Airways stated its preference for the larger minus 1000, having no need for the extra range of the minus 900 ULR. Compared to the standard minus 900, the minus 900 ULR additional value is likely around $2 million. ACJ-350 Airbus corporate jet version of the A350, the ACJ-350, is derived from the A350-900 ULR. As a result of the increased fuel capacity from the minus 900 ULR, the ACJ-350 has a maximum range of 20,000 km. The German Air Force is to be the first to receive the ACJ-350 having ordered three aircraft which will replace its two A340-300. A350 regional after the Boeing 787-10 launch at the 2013 Paris Air Show, Airbus discussed with airlines a possible A350-900 regional with a reduced mail of 250T. Engine thrust would have been reduced to 70,000 to 75,000 lbf from the standard 85,000 lbf and the variant would have been optimized for routes up to 6,800 nautical miles with seating for up to 360 passengers in a single class layout. The A350 regional was expected to be ordered by Etihad Airways and Singapore Airlines. Since 2013, there has been no further announcement about this variant. Singapore Airlines selected an A350-900 version for medium haul use. Japan Airlines took delivery of a 369-seat A350-900 with a 217-team TAO for its domestic market. The A350 type certificate data sheet includes MAOs of 217, 235, 240, 250, 255, 260, 268, 272, 275, 277, 278, and 280T. The 73. 8 meters long A350-1000 first flew on November 24, 2016. The A350-1000 is the largest variant of the A350 family at just under 74 meters in length. It seats 350 to 410 passengers in a typical three-class layout with a range of 8,700 nautical miles. With a 9 abreast configuration, it is designed to replace the A340-600 and compete with the Boeing 777-300ER and 777-9. Airbus estimates a 366-seat-1000 should have a 35 tons lighter operating empty weight than a 398-seat-777-9 a 15% lower trip cost, a 7% lower seat cost, and a 400 nautical miles greater range. Compared to a Boeing 777-300ER with 360 seats, Airbus claims a 25% fuel burn per seat advantage for an A350-1000 with 369 seats. The 7 meters extension seats 40 more passengers with 40% more premium area. The minus 1000 can match the 40 more seats of the 777 to 9 by going 10 abreast but with diminished comfort. The A350 1000 has an 11 frame stretch over the minus 900 and a slightly larger wing than the minus 800 900 models with trailing edge extension increasing its area by 
This will extend the high lift devices and the ailerons, making the cord bigger by around 400 mm, optimizing flap lift performance as well as cruise performance. The main landing gear is a 6-wheel bogey instead of a 4-wheel bogey, put in a one-frame longer bay. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engine's thrust is augmented to 97,000 lbf. These and other engineering upgrades are necessary so that the minus 1000 model maintains range. Qatar Airways was the A350-1000XWB launch operator in February 2018. It features an automatic emergency descent function to around 10,000 feet and notifies air traffic control if the crew fails to respond to an alert, indicating possible incapacitation from depressurization. The avionics software adaptation is activated by a push and pull button to avoid mistakes and could be retrofitted in the smaller minus 900. All performance targets have been met or exceeded, and it remains within its weight specification, unlike early minus 900s. Its basic 318 tau was increased to 311T before offering a possible 316T version. Its 316 team tau appeared on May 29, 2018 update of its type certificate data sheet. This raised its range from 7,950 to 8,400 nautical miles. A further tau increase by 3T, to a total of 319T is under study to be available from 2020 and could be a response to Qantas Project Sunrise. Initial speculation suggested that the variant might be marketed as the A350-1000 ULR. However, the minus 1000 is not expected to share the minus 900 ULR's larger fuel tanks and other fuel system modifications. And Airbus has stopped short of describing the largest MAO variant as a ULR model, despite the 8,700 nautical miles range. In December 2019, Qantas tentatively chose the A350-1000 to operate their Project Sunrise routes, before a final decision in March 2020 for up to 12 aircraft. In November 2019, Maximum accommodation increased to 480 seats from 440 through the installation of new Type A plus exits, with a dual lane evacuation slide. On December 17, 2021, French B took delivery of the first A350-1000 in this 480-seat configuration, leased by Air Lease Corporation and to be operated by from Paris to Reunion Island, with 40 premium and 440 economy seats. An A350-900 freighter was first mentioned in 2007, offering a similar capacity to the MD-11F with a range of 9,250 km, to be developed after the passenger version. In early 2020, Airbus was proposing an A350F before a potential launch. The proposed freighter would be slightly longer than the A350-900 and Airbus would need 50 orders to launch the $2 to $3 billion program. It would be 70. 1 meter long and be powered by Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 engines. Airbus calls the version A350F. In July 2021, the Airbus board approved the freighter development. It is based on the minus 1000 version for a payload over 90 tons, and entry into services targeted for 2025. The A350F would keep the A350-1000-319 team how, shortened but still 6. 9 meters longer than the Boeing 777F or 10% larger freight volume at 695 cubic meters compared to 633 cubic meters for the 777F, similar to the Boeing 747-8F. With a main deck cargo door behind the wing and reinforced main deck aluminum floor beams. Its 109T payload is higher than the 103. 7T of the 777F, while its empty weight is 30T lighter than the A350-1000, 20T lighter than the 777F. At the November 2021 Dubai Air Show. U.S. Lessor Air Lease Corporation became the launch customer with an order for 7 to be delivered around 2026, among other Airbus airliners. An A350-1000 of Cathay Pacific, the third largest A350 operator after Qatar Airways and Singapore Airlines there were 445 A350 aircraft in service with 39 operators and 49 customers as of November 2021. The five largest operators were Singapore Airlines, Qatar Airways, Cathay Pacific, Delta Airlines and Lufthansa. A350 family orders and deliveries by year orders deliveries as of November 2021 The global A350 fleet has zero fatalities and no hull loss accidents as of November 2021. A Vietnam Airlines A350-941 at toulouse Blagnac, the main production site of the type-related development aircraft of comparable role, configuration and aero related lists thanks for watching